Hey. 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 Hi. Sorry, I was interrupting a very like engaging conversation about why someone's comfortable with cosplay, and I'm sure it was a very I'm sorry I interrupted that. But uh, I think it's about time to get the panel going. Hello everyone, I'm Joe Cat. Uh, some of you probably already know who I am, some of you may not. Uh, but in case you don't, I make content on the internet, a variety of videos. Uh, and this is a panel about how getting to that variety was a nightmare. Uh, I make a variety of videos such as silly little animations, like of a little turtle brushing its shell against it, uh, a brush. Uh, longer video essays uh, where I talk about things that I like and analyzing it, like one of my favorite games. Uh, music videos such as the one that I made for Wizards of the Coast before their drama that happened in January that I, I signed the contract beforehand and couldn't have anticipated. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, which one? Don't you, don't you know how little that narrows it down? <laughs> Uh, and sometimes D&D live plays, uh, where I play on uh, live on Twitch, where I run D&D games with my friends and then re-upload them onto the main channel. Um, I do want to make it uh, clear, though, that this is not an advice panel. I have no idea what I'm doing, why it works, or why it doesn't. I just try some things and hope and pray. Uh, I have theories as to why certain things work and why certain things don't, but most of the time I'm just kind of winging it. Um, so why make a panel if I'm not trying to teach anything? Well, to quote the hit 2005 movie, Nanny McPhee, what lesson they learn is entirely up to them. Because uh, you're probably decently enough smart. Uh, you're millennial, so you'd never admit that. But uh, I believe you can come to your own conclusions. I believe in artistic interpretation. So. I think it's important to talk about how did I start. Uh, way back in 2018, I played a humble little game that some of you may have heard of called Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter World that came out that year on the consoles. I had a PS4, a hand-me-down that I bought from somebody else from uh, the same dorm. Um, and I made humble little videos, little let's plays called Overly Edited. Uh, and as the name sake says, uh, it, they were overly edited, they had text tracking, they had crazy ef special effects, they had like custom art that I made for it, and I'm still pretty proud of the videos, but, you know, they didn't do great compared to, you know, a bunch of other big YouTubers. They did amazing for someone who just started a channel. They had like 900 views, 800 views, one of them crossed a thousand, and seeing that first little like comma next to the one is like, oh, it's such a dopamine hit. Um, and uh, my friends thought that as well. They were like, wow, these are really blowing up at a thousand views. Uh, and it's uh, kind of getting me interested in Monster Hunter. You made Monster Hunter look fun. And uh, they wanted to join in too. But the problem is Monster Hunter is a very complicated game. Um, and they're not going to want to watch a 15, 30 minute tutorial on how to use one of its like 15 weapons. So I thought, okay, I want to teach them how to play Monster Hunter. And I want to do it entertaining, and I want to do it simple and approachable. Uh, approachable. So I made the Crap Guides to Monster Hunter. And that is basically when my channel first blew up. And they were doing amazing. Once they started picking up and people started seeing, uh, like, oh, wait, there's more of these videos. Because I was making them just about, like, every other day. I was cranking them out. I would record a session, upload it to YouTube with, like, the PlayStation 4's, like, share feature, download the videos, edit them and write a script and all this stuff and basically do it in a day. I was cranking these out. They're only like two minutes long. They're kind of funny. They give you the sort of vibe of the video and I made these for my friends, but they blew up. They went basically viral um, in terms of what you can call viral uh, for a small niche community like Monster Hunter and they were getting 1,000, 10,000, 30,000 views in a single day, and that shot my channel back when it was called Hijack, when it was a channel, a joint channel with me and my friends. It just basically put us right in the face of the Monster Hunter community. Now, how did it go wrong? Well, the series ended. It finished with the Crap Guide to Sword and Shield, the final weapon in the series, and you can see that big spike right there. That's when the episode came out, and you can see the views slowly going down and the rest of the videos I made, kind of following it, like down there uh, on the right side, 
were not crap guides. So of course they weren't gonna do as well. I get a little bit of a spike, but that's because I made another Monster Hunter video and people were there for Monster Hunter and crap guides, but nothing else. So what do I do? Uh, I had three options. I could either just say, you know, job well done. I made my viral hit, uh, my one hit wonder on the internet and just kind of go about doing my own thing, not worrying about views, not worrying about subscribers, not worrying about growth. I could say the line, Bart, and keep doing what people wanted me to do. Um, or I could take this as an opportunity to use my audience to do something completely different. And I chose that third option and made basically the opposite of the crap guides, and I made my video essay on one of my favorite games, Klonoa 2. And what I mean by opposite of the crap guides is it wasn't short, it was 30 minutes long. It wasn't comedic, it was analytical. And I didn't even use the same Wiggler head mascot. I used this weird, generic, anime protagonist looking twink in a yellow shirt. <laughs> so, of course, people are gonna be like, what the heck is this? Who is this guy? Some people didn't even know it was from the same channel. And the video bombed. This was the first month and a half where it struggled to reach 10,000 views compared to my crap guide videos, which made three times that much in one day. And so I fell into kind of a depression and something that I like to call the spiral, where I was stressed out about what the next video I would make. And so trying to relieve that stress, I would try and do a, a hobby or, or you know, watch a show, watch a movie, play a game, hang out with friends, but then because of that, I'm losing relevancy. Oh no, I need to release another big video. So then I'm stressed out because I'm not working. And then because I'm too stressed, I'm like, oh God, I'm stressed, I gotta relax. And then it just keeps going on and on and on. So I finally caved in and like SpongeBob, I ripped my pants uh, because that's what everybody wanted, right? Uh, so I did the, it again and I was like, okay, people like the crap guides. I can make another crap guide about something I'm interested in. Not Monster Hunter, because I'm kind of done with that. What else could I do? Well, I was really into D&D at the time, so I make it a crap guide to D&D. And uh, just like the hit 2000 straight-to-DVD sequel to the hit 90s movie, uh, an extremely goofy movie, I was right back where I started from. And uh, it did do really well. You can see on this graph, uh, kind of my analytics, where each big spike is another crap guide video that came out. And you can see in the middle there is some of the other stuff I made. I still tried to make some more Let's Plays, you know, my overly edited series, it didn't do great. I continued another series where I talk about character creators in video games called Character Creator Critique, it didn't do great. <laughs> Uh, I even uploaded some of, my, some of my stream bots because I started streaming at the time. It's ironic that that's a Final Fantasy XIV stream and it's doing awfully. Uh, fun fact about that video, even to this day, it has still not surpassed 30,000 views, um, which is how much you know, my crap guides were getting in one day, and that was four years ago. This is not me asking to go watch it anyway, this is just to give context. Um, in fact, don't watch it, it's kind of bad. Uh, <laughs> This is giving context of kind of where my thought process is. And I learned kind of a very big lesson that day. And it's not a resentful lesson, it's just a sad reality of content creation. And that is that hard work, passion, dedication, and even quality doesn't always pay off. Uh, sometimes it's just not going to reach the people that it needs to reach to blow up. Uh, sometimes people just aren't interested in it. Um, and sometimes maybe it is good, but it's not good enough. So again, back into the spiral I go. So I continue making the crap guides over a period of time, just kind of sprinkling it in to keep my channel alive, almost kind of reluctantly. And I do still think they're good videos. I didn't hate them, but it felt like an obligation now. In order to keep my channel going, I had to keep making them. So I would make them to kind of keep the channel relevant, while meanwhile sprinkling in all the other stuff I wanted to do, like maybe a Pokemon Let's Play, or like another stream highlight, or another uh, character creator critique. But of course, once again, as you can see, you can guess what those spikes were, more crap guides. Um, and despite the success, the bigger success, I feel like this is what really cemented my channel with staying power, despite that, I was in a really dark place around now, and I made a video called Joe Battle. 
and I kind of regret uploading it now because I feel like it was putting a bit too much pressure on the audience, uh, especially with the description that was called, uh, that said, this, it, it's metaphorical. Uh, the video is basically Joe Crap, the character I play in the Crap Guides, you know, the Wiggler head guy, flexing and doing the same move over and over to, uh, I think his name is John Morello, Tom Morello, the guitar like, burr, 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 and it's kind of two guitars trying to play with each other like they're having a conversation. Meanwhile, the little black haired me that more looks like me and the persona I, I identify with is trying to do different moves every single time until finally he's overtaken and intimidated by the Wiggler doing the same thing again but more aggressively. And it is metaphorical. Uh, it was kind of me expressing my frustration that doing the same thing over and over as something that doesn't come as naturally to me was getting all the attention and the staying power. But I really shouldn't have thrusted that on the audience. I feel like that's a thing that I should have worked out more internally. Um, so I do regret kind of uploading that video quite a bit. Um, but. Around this time, when I did you, what I I don't regret making it, but I do regret making it public because art can be a good way to express oneself, at least for me, and get those feelings out there. Because after I uploaded this, I learned a second important uh, lesson in that, and it's just that sometimes people just aren't going to care what I make, and that's okay, you know. Um, now. This may sound like I'm having first world problems, like I hate it that my house is so big that I need two wireless routers. And maybe in some ways it is, you know, I should be grateful with, for the audience and size that I have and the new variety I've gotten uh, because so many people would kill for those numbers, uh, even the low performing videos, you know, like it, it's lucky if you can break a thousand views on YouTube nowadays. Um, but, you know, the feeling is still there and to reveal a little bit behind the curtain, as this whole panel is kind of revealing behind the curtain, as I'm sure other content creators sometimes feel this way as well, that feeling of, man, if only I could be as good as X that's above me, that makes more money, that makes more views, that gets more viral videos and more consistent quality, if only I was as good as them, that feeling just kind of doesn't go away. Like even YouTube's Starboy Markiplier, I, I can guarantee He's got a few people in his mind that he's like, oh man, if only I was as good at videos as them, if only I was as entertaining as them, because it, it just doesn't go away, no matter how big you are. There's always another hill to climb. There's always another feeling that you're not doing as well as somebody else. So, it was at this time that I really needed to start reevaluating what do I want to do? Why am I making internet content? Is it to feel, fulfill some sort of purpose, some sort of need? Would I still make content if I had no audience? Is this just for them? What would I be doing if I wasn't making content? You know, like, if, would I still be animating? Would I be an engineer? Would I be flipping burgers? Uh, would I be working a minimum wage job? Do I even want to make internet content? Like, is it just the big flashy numbers that caught my eye and it just feels like a compulsion now? If I do continue making content, how long do I want to keep doing it? Do I want to do this forever? Do I want to move on to other things? You know, when is that going to be? What do I do after if I stop making content? Am I going to try and break into a more traditional industry? Like try and get hired at a, at, I don't know, Blue Sky, no, Blue Sky's shut down. Uh, like DreamWorks or Pixar or Disney or like shoot for the stars like that or maybe an independent thing. Do I even want to do animation? Um, and reevaluating all of this, just once again, it reiterates. Uh... So this slide is actually supposed to be here. I just totally forgot my notes and what I intended to say during this time because I thought that this slide was a repeat of a previous slide. It is not, but basically the gist is I learned another important lesson and that is the audience is not responsible or obligated to be interested in my work. This is a very important lesson that I learned around this time is that just because I spent a lot of time and effort and work on a specific type of video, it doesn't necessarily mean that I deserve views, that I deserve acknowledgement or am owed any of that stuff. I must have forgotten to say that in the panel. Sorry about that. Uh, that's not, that slide shouldn't be there. Um, it basically encapsulates 
what do I want to do? I have this platform, I have this opportunity, what do I want to do regardless of how well it's doing? And I came to the conclusion for myself that I want to make what I want to see. And now, this question is going to differ for every person. That's why, like I said, this is not an advice panel, but I do recommend anyone who does want to make content creation to ask yourself this question. You know, what do I want? Is it something that I can control? You know, I want views. Okay, what happens if you don't get them? What happens if nobody cares? Okay, I want to make stuff. I want to make art. I want to make cosplay. I want to make voice acting. I want to make meme clips. Okay, is that going to be enough for you, creatively, fulfillingly, even if nobody watches them? You know. So for me, it was I want to make the content that I want to see. That's how it started with Monster Hunter. I made content that was not available that I wanted to see. So I kept doing that. I interspersed all you know my upload schedule with you know crap guides every now and then. That's where the big spikes are. But kind of in between, keep doing what I wanted to do. And I discovered that over time, I started building an audience that did care about the lesser performing videos. Even if they were smaller, there were still people coming to see those other videos. And some of this overlaps too. There's some people that watched all of my stuff. Um, and so, you know, yeah, I just basically kept doing what I wanted to do regardless of how well it was performing. There's only one problem. Capitalism. Uh, unfortunately, we need money to survive, to pay the bills and get food. So I couldn't just make what I want. I need to make things that people want to see. So, you know, what I want to make and what people want to see don't always align, but sometimes they do. And now I have to figure out what that is, you know, so I can consistently do that. So I don't have to sacrifice, you know, my creative needs, but I'm also providing for the audience and what they want to see, and so I can survive and pay my bills. So, I reevaluated. I thought, okay, the Crap Guys is successful. Why? Let's look at the elements of it. It's comedic and entertaining, although anything can be entertaining to a certain people, uh, but mostly comedic. It was a little bit informative. It taught you about something uh, that you may be interested in, but you know, didn't have a chance to learn about it. It is animated. I wouldn't consider the crap guides animated, they're more like slideshows, but people considered them animations and there was enough animation, like this little intro wiggle head thing, that that's kind of what people are expecting and looking for. It had recognizable reoccurring characters, the crap guide characters and the wiggler head in particular. I uh, remember whenever I would upload something, as long as I put the wiggler head in the thumbnail, people would click on it. And that's a little manipulative, so I stopped doing it. <laughs> it also just didn't feel good that I would make a video, it felt dishonest that I was making a video that had nothing to do with the Wiggler mascot um, and still putting it in there because I was desperate for views. Like I had Q&A videos and all that stuff. But you know, what are you gonna do when you need to pay your bills? Uh, they had running gags, you know, so people liked to see reoccurring references and made them want to tune in for the future ones to see if the references came back, and it made them feel like they were a part of this journey. And they were easy to digest. They were pretty uh, simple, they were short. Even if you had nothing, you knew nothing about D&D or the characters, each individual video could stand on its own in some way. You could watch them in pretty much any order. And so I tried that. I tried to make videos that at least encapsulated some of those uh, characteristics. And luckily, I did have one recognizable character that wasn't exhausting, and it was the Gabo. So the first video I tried to kind of branch out was Gabo Ventures. Um, and it was kind of funny, it was animated, it had a recognizable character, and it was short and easy to digest. And you know what? The video did pretty good. And so I started doing that, uh, again, with the turtle. It's kind of funny, it's animated, It's Short and simple, so even if you're not all that invested, uh, you can just kind of click off or just click it. It's a low investment, it's less than a minute. Um, the Rhythm Heaven animation, it has uh, recognizable characters, both the Gabo and the Wiggler Head. Uh, it has a running gag about how you know he uses Smite and uh, Eldritch Blast and stuff like that. And again, it's short and it's animated. Um, and then, just to make sure that I knew what was working, I tried stuff that didn't work, just to be sure, is this really gonna work? 
or was it this, just a fluke? So, you know, I made like a stream highlight and it didn't do well because it had none of the characteristics of any of the things people were coming to my channel to watch. Um, I made this short little animation, which although it was animated and short, it didn't have a recognizable character. It had my logo, sure, but it didn't do very well. Only had a few characteristics and of course, another overly edited Let's Play. Uh, again, almost none of the characteristics didn't do very well. And then, uh, yeah, here's another graph where I just continue to try and do what I was doing before. You know, a crap guide here, uh, animated Gabo ventures there, a funny Tataru meme video, uh, another crap guide, just to keep the spikes up and keep them going. And then occasionally I can interlace it with some, you know, long form D&D content that I wanted to make, but no one really came to my channel for. That's not to say nobody wants to watch them. There's still plenty of people who want to watch this stuff, but the majority of them didn't really want to come watch that. And that's fine too, but yeah. Because I see my content as kind of a, a meal with rice and meat. The rice is there, it's nice, it's kind of whatever, but you're mostly there for the meat, but the rice supports it, you know? You're not there for the rice, you're there for the meat, but you know, it's kind of nice, juicy, things interspersed in a lesser kind of not as juicy, tasty thing, but it makes a nice meal. So after all this, I probably figure out where I want to go and what to do, right? Well, to quote the hit movie to the sequel to the hit movie from 2005, the movie from 2010, Nanny McPhee Returns, somehow I doubt that will be possible. <laughs> because just like in life, when it comes to content creation, no matter how well you're doing, you never know when your time will come to an end. What matters is what you do with that time. So, in the meantime, what I'm trying to... Oh, that's right, I'm sorry, I forgot about the slide and I made it. Sometimes you can do the same thing over and over again and it will work out. Like Yahtzee Croshaw and the Zero Punctuation series that he's been making since 2007. And it's still relevant, it's still going strong, and I wish I had that same fortitude to keep making the same thing for 15 years. I just don't. I need more creative freedom than that. But some people can do that. Um, maybe one day I will find content like that and it will work out. Or maybe it will turn out like Red vs. Blue and you'll make something that's not very good because you keep making the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Now, I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with enjoying Red vs. Blue Zero, but you have to admit that most people don't like it. Uh, because they keep making it, they're kind of out of ideas, they kind of don't know what they're, they want to do, and I'm afraid of doing that with my content. But then, on the flip side, changing things up is also equally as turbulent. Uh, sometimes it can work out, like Tomska. He made a second channel, Tomska and Friends. He's the creator of Astiff Movie, if you know, you know, like, uh, I'm gonna do an internet, we, you know, that one. Um, and he basically stopped doing a lot of stuff on his main channel and made a second channel where he did whatever he wanted, and it's working out great. But sometimes that pivoting cannot work out great, like Anthony Padella, um, who was formerly from Smosh. He's fine now. He's kind of regained relevancy, but there was a certain period of time on his personal channel where he was just not, like, no one knew what he was doing and no one was watching what he was doing. Um, so, basically, I don't know how the internet works. Just for now, I'm just trying to find this middle part and just doing what I can. And I don't really know where to go from here. But um, yeah, that's uh, kind of the struggles of what it's like to pivot content from making something that everyone knows you for and trying to do something else. But yeah, I think we do have quite a bit of time actually. So if you would like to line up, we can do a little bit of Q&A. Uh, there's a microphone right there. Uh, if you could uh, line up in an orderly fashion, we can take questions for the next uh, maybe like 20 minutes. What's up? Hey, so my name's Tony, uh, long time fan. Obviously kind of started the Monster Hunter world where it was like rap guides. And uh, both myself and my little brother over here, we've been watching your content for a while. So we like to see the evolution and obviously we know kind of that, that battling phase. But uh, you know, I wanted to ask, you know, with YouTube, obviously they put certain things in certain like, uh, 
you know, restrictions and whatnot, and you have to kind of battle that corporate element where it's like, oh, if you want to get mid rolls, you got to get ten minutes. Yeah. How how have you um, kind of interacted with that, or has that shaped your content in any way? Ooh, I think I'm in a unique position of privilege where I don't have to worry about that. So I try not to. I just think about the video, the vision I have for this video and make that and not try to compromise because of what uh, YouTube wants from it. Um, that said, that's not gonna be the case for everyone. If I wasn't in my position, I probably would still try to do that. Um, if YouTube wasn't full-time and I was doing like, a, uh, I had a side job, like a regular nine to five, I think I personally would still try to keep my videos as my artistic vision and not try to be influenced by the corporate nature of it because I feel like that is what makes them the most fulfilling for me. Uh, some people will be able to compromise their vision for that and don't think it's a big deal and yeah, I can't do that. Some people can, but I can't. Um, yeah, that's how I do it. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you for the question. Appreciate yeah, it. of course. Thank you. Hattie. Oh, sorry. Hattie. Hi. Uh, had a question. Because of like YouTube and you do uh, streaming for your uh, TV stuff, mm -hmm. um, how do you manage um, keeping up the streaming schedule with the editing and cutting of your content? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, geez, I don't know that I have an answer to that. Um, once again, I'm very lucky in that uh, I'm at a size now that I feel like as long as I don't go too long without a video, I'll be fine. So I just kind of do it when the motivation comes. Uh, granted, I can't do that all the time because sometimes I have projects with other people involved where there is a deadline and I can't keep them waiting forever. But what I do usually is for stream day, because it takes a lot of energy out of me to stream, for stream day, I'm like, I'm not doing anything except just like waiting and, and like getting ready, mentally ready for stream and focusing on getting that good and ready and then relaxing afterwards. And then maybe I'll have another day, like the next day I will not stream. I can't do streams every day. Like that, that's for me, like that's how I do it. So I'll like stream, no stream day. Okay, no stream day, am I feeling good? I'll edit, I'll make videos. Uh, next day, do I stream, do I not stream? I'm not streaming, do I feel like editing? I'll edit. Um, that's how I do it. Uh, if I did stick to a strict stream schedule, as sometimes I do, that's what I try to do. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, mine is kind of a two-stage question. Okay. Um, I recently started getting back into your content through your top form. Oh, yeah. Um, that kind of re-sparked my love for content in 14. I was wondering, first, do you plan on making a edited, kind of condensed version of your top prom for the main chance? I do not. However, when we eventually clear top, I will upload the winning run. Okay. That is what I plan and to do. Yeah. And the second stage of that is, how has top frog affected your streaming kind of audience? And how do you feel about that kind of I guess kind of more ultimate-minded mentality that... Has Top Prog affected my audience? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, firstly, because I don't look at the numbers a lot of the time. I feel like it's better for me mentally to not worry about the numbers. I also can't tell sometimes who has been coming back because there's like hundreds of people in the stream. Sometimes I'll recognize a few names, but I don't know who's coming and going all the time. So I don't know how it has affected how my audience has changed, but um, yeah, there. I, I guess a few hardcore raiders have been coming in, and again, I, I'm sorry this answer is so vague, but I can't know because I'm paying attention to the raid rather than looking at the chat and chatting with them. Um, I am incredibly grateful for people who join in though, because I, I understand it's not the easiest thing to watch, um, nor interesting. It's the same thing over and over again. So I am incredibly appreciative of anyone who joins in. If anything, I appreciate those people who have tuned in or lurked or just like set it on while they go do some like eating or food or work. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry, kind of a vague answer to the question, but I don't know how it has affected it. One, one small follow up to that. Has it been something that 
because it is a long form mm -hmm. piece of content, is it something that you yourself have continued to enjoy? Or has it kind of begun to diminish over time? Mm. That is a good question. I guess it has diminished over time, but I think that is just because top fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, I've heard from other Ultimate Raiders that it is the hardest Ultimate and not in a satisfying way. Um, and I, I totally understand why. But that said though, um, I've done other long form content, like when I was playing in New Game Plus through Final Fantasy, and that's long form, and I enjoyed that a lot. So I guess the answer is not for Top. I have not enjoyed it, but that is because of Top, not because of the long form content. Thank you so much. Thank you. With the craft guides, obviously they make a lot, uh, take you a lot of use. Do you, at this point, dislike them having to like, make them just to keep it relevant? Do I dislike the craft guides? There was a little time where I kind of resented them, but now I think I've come to peace with them and like be like, no, these are pretty good videos. I'm glad they helped me get where I am, and there's... Uh, I like a lot of them, but that's not, like, I, some of them I'm still like, this is not a great video, but that's not exclusive to the Crack Guides, that's like a lot of my older videos, it's, it's not a Crack Guide problem, it's just a YouTuber problem, sometimes you look back at your old, old videos and be like, oh, this is bad, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I did at one point, but now I'm like, no, they're fine, uh, the only person holding me back is myself. And for the Gobbo and other merch and stuff, is that something more for the fans or is because does it actually help with revenue? A little bit of both. Um, I always wanted kind of something to have to let fans have like a piece of, I don't know, my work with them, not just the experiences they get from the videos. But it has also been incredible revenue and it makes me understand why Pixar's cars got three sequels is because their merchandise makes a lot of money. <laughs> uh, yeah. One last small thing. So the Joe Crap versus the Joe Cat kind of dance thing, I, when I saw that, I didn't even know of the artistic stuff behind it. You said you wish you had put that out. Me coming from a place that I didn't know that, I just thought it was hilarious. And yeah. Really and funny. I love that video. So yeah. I don't know if, like, someone enjoying that even though it may not have like the message you're trying to send i didn't quite get but i still enjoyed it a lot and that's the that's the thing as content creators you have to consider as well it is like is the thing people are getting out of this video is that more important than what i'm getting out of this video and there's no real answer to that it's like yeah some plenty of people are not going to get that uh, kind of deeper interpretation of it um, and in that sense, it is fine in and of itself. Um, I just have personal gripes with my own self with the intentions behind that video. Um, the video itself is harmless. I just feel as though I shouldn't have made it with the intentions that I did. And I should, because I feel like that's a very toxic mindset to be in. Um, well, no, actually, I take that back. It's not a toxic mindset to be in, but it's a very vulnerable place to be in. Um, and sometimes that vulnerability should be private and dealt with, with, I don't know, like a professional. That's how I think I should do it. Other people like expressing themselves artistically to get that closure, like Pink Floyd's The Wall. The Wall is a very personal thing to uh, him and just how he expresses his frustrations with his life growing up. And that's going to work for some people, but I don't think that that was good for me. I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I'm glad that it has a positive uh, effect on anybody, really. So, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hey there. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to change the subject to a lighter mood. <laughs> yeah. You have a hectic and busy schedule on how busy you get. What do you do for meal prep? Or do you have any good meals? that I can quickly make. Ooh, meal prep. <laughs> yes, actually. I have uh, this very fancy rice cooker that I just love making rice dishes with now. Yes, okay, I have a great rice dish for you. Uh, it, whenever I don't know what to make, uh, if you can get some uh, some raw chicken uh, from the store, any old store, whether it be frozen or refrigerated, chop it up, uh, get some fish sauce, all right? Uh, toss it in with some fish sauce, some, do you like cilantro? 
cilantro? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. I know it's a very divisive thing. Some people think it tastes like soap. It does. Listen, it's okay. <laughs> All right, if you don't, for, for those of you who don't like cilantro, you can substitute it out for spinach. Um, but basically, chicken, your choice of green, uh, green onions is good. Uh, throw in some fish sauce, some garlic powder, uh, some basil, uh, and stir it quite a bit, maybe a little bit of butter. Uh, and it's just some really good stir fry. Ooh, put some soy in it as well. Soy sauce. Soy sauce. Uh, if you really want something to like absorb the flavor in the pan, because there's gonna be like a lot of grease and stuff, throw in eggs. After you're done cooking the chicken, drop some eggs. You're gonna have little egg bits that are gonna absorb all the flavor. It's gonna be very tasty. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. I cook that all the time whenever I don't know what to cook. That's what I'm planning on doing for my HOH runs. Yay! Right now I'm trying to do solo uh, Heaven on High. Oh, good luck. I wiped on Nike one twice. No! It was oh. to a Chimera that did an ice attack. Oh, I've never reached that high, but I hear like it's all fun and games until like 95. 70? 70, that's the one, if yeah. If you play 70 correctly, 90's breeze. Okay. You know, it's quite a thing. Best of luck. Get that lone hero title. I have the Once in the Future King title. Nice. So. I don't know what that's for. That's <laughs> <laughs> for uh, Eureka Orthros. Oh, so. I still have yet to touch that. I need to do it. If you but yeah, thank you. I'm willing to take you in. Mm, okay. Thank you for the question. Also, uh, the tall person that was there before you, uh, y'all are the last five people for the. No, wait. Uh, no, okay. These last five people. I want you to come up, so, since we still have time, I want you to come up and grab a gobble. Hmm? Uh, after you finish the question, yeah. So, Where can I buy a gobble? Unfortunately, they are not for sale right now. Um, the last one that just finished like a month ago. But uh, I am constantly in the talks with Makeshift because I think I'm like their best selling plushes, so they keep coming back to me. The next one is gonna be a bard. So look out for that, and uh, that will happen, I don't know, maybe in August. So, yeah. Am I getting a gobble? Yes, you're getting a gobble. Oh. Come get it. Can I get a picture of you? Yeah, uh, after, after, after we're all done, course. we can get a picture. Yeah. And thank you for the uh, chicken recipe. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I look forward to trying it. Hello. Hello. I have one simple question. Go ahead. I didn't know, wait, first off, I didn't know this would turn into a cooking show in the past. <laughs> I cook a lot. What spot, what sparked your interest in just becoming a 2D model? A oh, a 2D model, uh, money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, regardless, we're happy to have you in the scene. We're happy that you became a YouTuber and all that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, it has opened my eyes to how much you have to how move your much, face. How much money you can make out of it. Oh, I made like five bucks. It was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wish you the best. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yes, here. Come grab your gobble. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Weirdly, my question is related. Ooh. Is the Catboy model more of a self-insert? Because I know, like, uh, Wigglerhead is a character. That is not you. That's not how you feel. You've discussed that in mobile chats. I believe you've worked for imagining things. But um, is the Catboy character more of a self-insert or pandering to the crowd? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, so it, it's a little bit of both. It's a self insert, and I do like the cat ears. I think they're, you know, they're very cute. Um, and the, it is a little bit of pandering because I know cat boys are in right now, thankfully. And it, it would have been a mis. You know, my last name, my last. Hey, it was cat boy. Uh, my last name is Catalanello, and my family has dad joked the hell out of the cat part of it. So it would just be a missed opportunity if I didn't take it. So. And quick secondary question, how did I get from, through my first 300 hours of Final Fantasy? Oh man, uh, jeez. Uh, you seem, you seem theatrical. Uh, voice acted. Voice acted well, with some God. friends. Yeah. Voice acted with some friends, get in a Discord call, that's what I've been doing with a friend who just started A Realm Reborn. Voice act the characters with friends like you're reading a visual novel, it can be, it can be fun. That's how I've I did it. I've been in the game for years, I have five hours of playing it because it keeps... Because I know there's the first 300 hours you have to get through to get through to... Yeah. A Realm Reborn. A Realm Reborn. Oh, nice. Good, good luck. 
Just bear with it. It's just, just trust me. There's a there's a very handsome, hot, tall man named uh, Amrick by the end of it, and you will be. So you're saying close your eyes and think of Amrick. You think of Amrick. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Noted. Yes. Awesome. Here, come grab your gobble. Here you go. Hello. Hello. Like daily life stuff, you could probably do it like you know your own spin, like Brian David Gilbert. It's kind of shared uh, recipes. Brian David Gilbert's my hero. I know, right? He's great, and you're great too. And I think you could do a good job with it. I've totally watched it. Maybe on that secret channel that we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I wanted to say first that I'm I'm proud and I'm glad of the path you've taken thus far as a channel creator and as a person because it's led you here now. Aww. And the path that you're now taking and everything is, you know, it's, it's a cool one. And you do seem to be like in a bit of a better place. Yes, absolutely. So um, I'm, I'm really happy that you've reached that point. Thank and you. And I'm glad that I'm happy to see where you go next because you're a really good creator. It's very sweet of you. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> but the, the other question was about the goblin. Oh, the goblin's really great. It's really cute. And I was really curious about the creative journey to like make him. Did you doodle him mm. on a paper somewhere and you went, I should turn that to a marketable session? Yes. <laughs> as, as I started using the goblin in a lot of the crap guides over and over again, as the design started to get iteration, I'm like, I kind of like this as the de facto mascot more than the wiggler head. <laughs> um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so then, thank you. Thank you so much. Here, oh, oh. come grab your goblin. So, I have... Yes, you have a gobble now. Oh my god. I have two of them at home oh. that my brother got me, and it's his birthday today, so I'm going to give it to him. Oh, yeah. So oh, you're so sweet. Oh, I didn't... Oh, I'm sorry, Solaire. I, I thought that that would be the last people. It's fine. Okay, sorry. And you're repairing by raising the sun. Yes, of course, every day. You can have mine. But anyway, so I was going to ask a question. So obviously you have a very big interest in animation, it seems. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about using that interest in animation? Like you were talking about how, you know, the short instructional comedic videos, you know, were generally a pretty popular thing. Have you ever considered doing that with the animation? Like, with animating techniques? Yeah, actually. Um, maybe not specifically in the grap uh, crap guide format, um, <laughs> because uh, revealing a little bit behind the curtain, they are exhausting to write and record for. Um, and that's kind of why I'm stopping them. It's because I, I'm just running out of material. But yeah, like comedic uh, skits or like... Um, in fact, I did a little bit of that, like the, the Christmas video, the Halloween Christmas video where like me and Echo are eating candy and then Mariah Carey bursts through the door uh, <laughs> singing All I Want for Christmas with snow covering us. Like I, I do want to do comedic stuff with animation. Um, maybe stream highlights and stuff uh, with animation and other funny things. Yeah, I could see myself doing that. Yeah. Well, I, mean, like, I was thinking, like, even like in terms of like, instructing, like on animation, like on oh, those animation. Oh, instructional videos with animation. Oh, maybe. Crap, like to animation. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm oh sorry. God. <laughs> Potentially, I I do like sharing knowledge and teaching people things. So accompanying that with animation could, could yeah, it, it's definitely been an idea that has been swimming around. It's just, uh, animation is hard. <laughs> I mean, obviously, but I mean, like, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I always find it fascinating when, you know, I look at, you know, people who do, you know, a bit of animation stuff, you know, how, what, you know, sort of tools they're using, you know, what, what their process looks like and the kinds of things that they are doing and what their process looks like, you know, all the, how they're using their tools, you know, they go, oh, you know, what, you know, how they're layering yeah. things, how they're applying their effects. So yeah, I guess, would I consider it? Yes, I would. I would consider potentially making that. Will it happen? Who knows? <laughs> I've, I have more canceled projects than you will ever know. <laughs> well, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Come grab I, your gobble. I, I, I will let him have the gobble. Are you sure? <laughs> that's very Praise kind of you. I, Praise I, the I, I, I can't deny that. Okay. Here, I'll give you some like a dog. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that is so odd, that? 
through 14 more of those and you can shoot lightning. <laughs> Until he gets Hello. Until he gets I kind of got a two-parter as well. Okay. So first one is, when it comes to like cons, you just like, do they call you, say they want you, or you just call the cons like, yo, I want to do a booth. Uh, this is the only con that's ever called me. Um, and most of the time, <laughs> yeah, lunar con. Uh, most of the time, uh, I do nothing, and my friends do all the con planning. Uh, as you've noticed, this is the first time I've ever hosted a solo panel. So uh, I have yet to do any con planning. So yeah, let's keep that streak up. When they called you that you wanted to do a panel, were you just like, what am I going to do? Kind of, yeah. They were like, we want you to do something about content creation. And I'm like, what about the other two? And they're like, figure it out. Uh, they, were ni they were nicer about it than that, but yeah. Yeah, they, they, that's a lot of trust they put in me. Would you like a gala? Also, also this, so the plan was to give these out to the last people that wouldn't be able to ask a question. I'm sorry, I didn't anticipate that more people would come with ask questions. I'm sorry. I'll look out for you one as well. Put it in the helmet. <laughs> there he comes. There he is. Wonderful. Yeah, there you go. Hey, the sun. Hello. Um, I was just going to ask because I'm curious as somebody who. Um, Somebody who pays bills and does YouTube and makes money like income full time and does oh. that, like nine to five job. Plug that channel. Well, no, no, no I mean like. Oh, oh it's me. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so, like, for, uh, if you're not working like a nine to five job. What is your daily schedule generally like? Oh, geez, I get up at noon. Uh, sometimes uh, the schedule actually has been fixed where I get up at a reasonable time. I eat breakfast. I go to my office and I procrastinate. Um, sometimes I try to force myself to work, um, but sometimes you just have to let the inspiration come. Admittedly, that is a very lucky position, and I will never take it for granted, because, good lord, some people would kill for that position. But most of the time, I sit in front of my computer, I'm like, coming up with ideas. Sometimes I'll just, because there was one Renaissance artist, paint, painter, um, I don't remember the name of it, but his whole deal was he took a bunch of money from some kind of Italian king or something, went on vacation for a year, and then he comes back and paints like some massive mural that sold for like 11 billion uh, francs or whatever it is the Italian uh, currency is. And that's kind of sometimes what I do on a smaller scale. It's like the inspiration will come, but also sometimes, you, like a plumber, you just have to help force work, like a plumber can't decide when they go out to do their job, you know, when they get hired they just have to go out and do it. I'm still trying to find that balance, but usually, like, after breakfast, I will go to the office, try and do work, sometimes it doesn't succeed because that's also my playroom, um, <laughs> and I need to separate it, so I stop associating the computer with games, I'll go eat lunch, go back into the office, try to do work, maybe procrastinate, um, maybe uh, if the day I'm feeling it, I'll cook dinner, uh, eat dinner, and then usually the rest of the day after dinner, I'll relax. Um, so would you generally describe, do you generally, would you say your schedule is generally like very structured or is it like, would you No, it is turbulent as heck. Okay. I try to give it structure, but um, sometimes if I'm tired during the day, I'll just nap because I I have, I'm lucky enough that I can sleep during the day, so I should when I'm tired, I feel anyway. Um, and I feel like everyone should have that chance, honestly. That would be so nice, could you imagine? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like, if I have the opportunity to, why not do it? Uh. That's all I have to ask. Okay, yeah, thanks. Hello, Team Skull. We can't pay rent because our mid-childhood was misspent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, twist it down. Yeah, yeah, there we go. In the middle. In the middle, yeah. Twist it so you can don't have to I'm crane your neck. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. We're all done here. 
Um, so, sorry, I'm actually sure. Take your time. Up here. Um, I cannot tell you how many of your uh, crap guide to D&D videos I have posted in my own campaigns memes to store. <laughs> Three, three years. Oh my gosh. Uh, but um, I just wanted to know what, what what is out of all the content, including the love letter to, uh, I don't want your money. I just want a date. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what, what was your, what was your favorite video making, just like overall, oh, content geez. wise or? Oh, uh, I think. A lot of my shorter non-crap guide videos, like the Deer Raid Shadow Legends I Want to Date, uh, the Halloween Mariah Carey one, um, the to to uh, tortoise brushing his shell, like those short ones, I'm always excited and enjoy making all the way through. Because they're short, I never reach the point of like, I'm bored of this, I want it to be finished, because that's like usually the point you reach sometimes with the longer videos where you just don't want to work on it anymore. And those shorter ones, I never feel that way because they're too short um, to ever reach that point. So yeah, those. Uh, if I had to pick a number one, probably the um, Rhythm Heaven one. That one was really fun. The, the one where I'm like slashing things that the gobble is tossing at me mm -hmm. at, uh, to hole in one two. Also, I love rhythm games. So, yeah. That's probably number one. Thank you. I just wanted to kind of see from like your point of view, like I know you've made like a lot of like guides and squad mm -hmm. like what appeals you, like what is fun for you today? Yeah, mostly animations. Yeah, fun little short animations that don't take a lot of investment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for the question. See, so yeah, when you were going through your history, you mentioned the moment where you created the uh, little twink anime boy avatar <laughs> uh, instead of the wiggler head one. Uh, and yeah, you, you described his outfit, the yellow shirt, and, but you are wearing almost exactly yeah. the same thing. So I wanted to ask, did you buy that outfit to match your avatar so people would rec you know, think you looked like your avatar? Or yes. Did you design okay. <laughs> I, my, my amount of yellow shirts has gone up incredibly <laughs> since I made that avatar. Nice. <laughs> also, I love your mustache. Thanks. I grew it myself. Nice. <laughs> so, hello. So, recently there was a OSP with like, that you were on where yeah. it's oops all, all, oops, all artists. So, and I really enjoyed listening to y'all's history about like, oh, this is why I did art, and this is how, like, and you gave recommendations on like, don't trace, but fuck, but like, you can use it to assist you. And uh, I just really liked how like all y'all mesh well and were able to collaborate and chatting. So, have you ever thought about doing more like collaboration stuff like that? Like I know I don't know how, how friendly you are with the you know artist world of YouTube's, but like any ideas on doing? This that? is very selfish of me to say, but yes, so long as the amount of work I have to do is minimal. <laughs> <laughs> That's why a lot of collaborations I've been a part of have been on other people's channels mm -hmm. rather than get them guest starring on mine. It's not that I don't want them on my channel, it just means that if it's on my channel, I have to do all the work, uh, or at least the majority of it. That's not always the case, and I really should <laughs> try to stop that mindset, uh, and I'm gonna Try and work at it. I'm still growing, later. but later, yeah, I'll I'll work on that. Yeah. So, any more ideas for future collaborations and stuff like that? Potentially. The problem is another different problem is I am extremely introverted and I have a hard time keeping up with so many friends. So, a lot of my friends, I will grow months without saying a single message to them on Discord or Twitter. And I usually have like a small circle of like five to 10 friends that I actually keep up with. Anyone else, it's just so hard for me. Um, and luckily they understand that. Um, I'm very grateful that they're, they don't hold it against me. They're not like, why did you message me? Uh, it's just, I'm just, that's just how I am. Um, it's nothing personal. But uh, yeah, I, I would like to do more collaborations. Oh, we'll keep a hold him to it. I'll, I'll be the extrovert. <laughs> yes. It's okay. I haven't spoken to this guy in five years, and then I just ran as him outside. Like. And then you get along like no time has passed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, exactly. Whatever works. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that's everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to the panel. I think we're done right off the All right. Awesome. Yeah.